Cushing syndrome. Cushing syndrome occurs due to excess circulating glucocorticoids over a period of time. The most common cause is iatrogenic, including the use of topical and inhaled glucocorticoids. Endogenous causes of Cushing syndrome may be divided into adrenocorticotropic dependent and non-adrenocorticotropic dependent disease. ACTH dependent. The causes of ACTH dependent Cushing syndrome are associated with bilateral adrenocortical hyperplasia. Their relative frequency is as follows. Cushing's disease, pituitary hypersecretion of adrenocorticotropic hormone. 65 to 70 percent of all Cushing syndrome. Ectopic secretion of adrenocorticotropic hormone by non pituitary tumors, 10 to 15 percent. Ectopic secretion of CRH by non hypothalamic tumors causing pituitary hypersecretion of ACTH, less than 1 percent. Iatrogenic or factitious Cushing syndrome due to administration of exogenous adrenocorticotropic hormone, not glucocorticoids, is less than 1%. ACTH independent. The causes of ACTH independent Cushing syndrome are as follows. Iatrogenic or factitious Cushing syndrome, which is by far the most common cause as noted above. Adrenocortical adenomas and carcinomas make up 18 to 20 percent. Primary pigmented nodular adrenocortical disease, also called bilateral adrenal micronodular hyperplasia, less than 1 percent. Bilateral macronodular adrenal hyperplasia is less than 1 percent. This disorder must be distinguished from macronodular hyperplasia in Cushing's disease in which plasma adrenocorticotropic hormone concentrations are not suppressed. Diagnosis Etiology of Cushing syndrome can be elucidated using dexamethasone suppression test. Dexamethasone is a highly potent corticosteroid that interacts with the body's normal feedback system to aid in the diagnosis of Cushing's. In a normal individual, low dose of dexamethasone causes suppression of ACTH and thus reducing cortisol levels. In a patient with pituitary Cushing's, low dose will fail to suppress the adrenocorticotropic hormone and cortisol. High dose dexamethasone will suppress the body's endogenous ACTH and cortisol production by negative feedback. In a patient with ectopic ACTH production, high dose of dexamethasone will not suppress the adrenocorticotropic hormone or cortisol levels because only pituitary adrenocorticotropic hormone is susceptible to feedback inhibition. Thus, this patient will have elevated cortisol after high dose suppression test. Hallmark feature of Cushing syndrome is increase in cortisol levels, and increase in 24-hour urine-free cortisol level. Let's have a look regarding cortisol's functions in the body. They are anti-inflammatory, maintains blood pressure, increases gluconeogenesis, lipolysis, and proteolysis, decreases immune function, decreases bone formation. Signs and symptoms. The signs and symptoms of Cushing syndrome are as follows. The more common signs and symptoms are decreased libido, obesity or weight gain, plethora, round face, hirsutism, menstrual changes, hypertension, ecchymosis, lethargy or depression, dorsal fat pad, abnormal glucose tolerance. Less common are ECG abnormalities or atherosclerosis, striae, edema, proximal muscle weakness, osteopenia or fracture, headache, backache, recurrent infections, abdominal pain, 
acne, female balding, management of Cushing syndrome. Goals. Ideal therapy of Cushing syndrome would achieve the following goals. Reverse the clinical manifestations by reducing cortisol secretion to normal. Eradicate any tumor threatening the health of the patient. Avoid permanent dependence on medications. Avoid permanent hormone deficiency. Treatment. Optimal treatment involves localization and complete removal of corticotropin secreting pituitary or ectopic tumor or cortisol secreting adrenal tumor. In patients with Cushing's disease who were not cured by pituitary surgery, medical therapy targeting the corticotrophic tumor such as cabergoline or pasireotide can result in normalization of 24-hour urinary free cortisol in 20 to 40 percent of them, especially if they have only mild hypercortisolism. Pituitary eradication is another second-line treatment for persistent or recurrent Cushing's disease. Adrenal enzyme inhibitors must be used to control hypercortisolism until RT is effective. Conventional RT will correct the hypercortisolism in up to 85% of adults when used after debulking surgery. Bilateral adrenalectomy is a definitive treatment for adrenocorticotropic hormone secreting pituitary or ectopic tumors. Metastatic or occult ectopic ACTH secreting tumors may respond to somatostatin analog treatment, adrenal enzyme inhibitors, or mitotane. The physical symptoms and signs of Cushing syndrome resolve gradually over a period of 2 to 12 months after effective cure of Cushing syndrome. Hypertension, osteoporosis, and glucose intolerance improve but may not disappear. Patients may have impaired quality of life for many years despite remission of hypercortisolism. However, the long-term prognosis of cured patients who had benign disease is excellent. The prognosis of patients with malignancy is variable and relates to the ability to control hypercortisolism and treat the cancer.